All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Dan Reeser with the Web3 Foundation, and I'm here with Stefan from um, Avado. He's the CTO of Avado based in um, Belgium, and we'll be talking us through um, a lot of information around setting up a Kusama node using um, the, the Avado kind of hardware. Um, Stefan will introduce himself, his background, and what he'll talk about today. And then if you guys have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to post questions here. Um, you'll see at the bottom there's an ask a question box. So feel free to ask questions throughout. And then I think uh, Stefan will, will stop at the end for additional questions if you have them. So um, with that, I'll let you go ahead and get started. OK, then uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, so my name is Stefan, uh, CTO of Avado. Uh, my background is in uh, in IT. I've been uh, into the whole blockchain ecosystem since 2015. Um, and one of the things that we've uh, noticed there is that there's uh, often a sort of a discrepancy between what people actually build uh, and publish and how they 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 are um, they sort of require people to use it. So most of the blockchain projects that you currently see. Uh, they are providing software uh, on their website. So it means that you, they require people to download the software, but also to provide the hardware necessary uh, to run that software. Now, as you know, a lot of that software needs to be uh, running uh, up and running 24 seven. So it also means that running it on a laptop or something is not very uh, useful. Often these blockchain uh, applications also take a quite significant amount of bandwidth. Uh, so pretty early on, we saw there needs to be a solution for that. Um, and then yeah, people either go to data centers to find solutions to, to run stuff. Uh, but it is, of course, not really in the, the whole uh, ethos and the whole uh, thought of blockchain, where decentralization should be key. And that were sort of the uh, some initial reasons why we started out uh, with the Avado. So, I'm going to tell in this session a little bit more about what Avado is. Um, and for those who don't uh, own an Avado or haven't seen any of the YouTube videos we have on our channel, um, I'm also going to try to give a live demo and just walk you around uh, the UI so you can sort of have a look uh, and, and an idea what Avado is all about. Um, so let me try to share my screen and then I can show you some initial information. some introductory stuff. And I believe, can you all uh, see my screen right now? Looks good. Yeah, okay, perfect. So Avado first uh, about our mission. Uh, so we want to provide plug and play hardware to run decentralized applications. So we really are selling boxes. So maybe in the bottom of the screen, you can see me uh, here holding one of these boxes. So these are real small uh, appliances, just like CPU, uh, a solid state disk in there uh, and so forth. So it's really just a, a PC, but it's pre-configured. Um, so that means it comes with software that enables you to run all kinds of decentralized applications. Um, what we want to achieve is to lower the barrier uh, for people to participate in those kind of networks uh, so that it's easier for people to really start running that software. So um, our ambition is really that uh, software projects in the end would uh, sort of have two options on their website. So either you download the software and install it on your own hardware, or you can just purchase a box with their software pre-installed on it uh, on an Avado box and you can just uh, buy it from there and start running it. Um, and the third part of our mission is ease of use. So we really want this to make, to make it uh, very simple for people uh, that really everybody can understand it. So often if you look at software uh, and want to run a node for any kind of blockchain uh, system, you often have to wait through pages and pages of documentation. And that's what we've all done for you. We've created these packages where you can just like uh, just point and click and install one of these nodes without uh, the need to know every nitty gritty detail about it. Uh, so about our products, so we have, uh, like I just showed you, the special hardware or specialized hardware uh, that allows you to run multiple blockchains, uh, an easy to use uh, user interface and, and some monitoring on there. We also have very importantly, an integrated DApp store uh, which allows you to install any of these dApps. I will show that later. 
Um, it's also ready as a proof of stake validator node. And we also introduced the concept of smart mining. I will explain that also uh, later on, but it basically allows you to rent out your hardware. So all the components that are there, like the bandwidth, the storage or the processing power, this, these are all stuff uh, you can rent out and uh, sort of get an earning from that. And then uh, lastly, we have remote access. So it comes with a Wi-Fi access point. So if you install it at home, you can set it up using a built-in Wi-Fi. And it also has support for VPN. So it has a VPN server built in. So that means you can also remotely contact uh, it. So you can dial into your own box uh, from anywhere in the world. Um, what are the, our unique selling points? Uh, first of all, Avado is blockchain agnostic. Uh, so that means you can run, e run any blockchain. So we are not uh, sort of, uh, we don't have any preference for a certain blockchain implementation. And it's even so that it's not necessary to run a blockchain node on the Avado. So it's, uh, it's optional. So you can choose any kind of flavor um, or just run none uh, whatsoever. Uh, secondly, we have a decentralized cloud. Uh, that means that you can add your own device to a cloud that we have set up and also share the software that you're running on the box with others. We also provide fast updates. So that means that new packages that emerge in the market, uh, we try to explore them and add them as soon as possible. Uh, we also maintain, of course, the packages and certainly with these bleeding edge uh, blockchains like Kusama, for example, um, we, yeah, we often have to uh, be very alert to, uh, to do the newest uh, updates to the, the last version that came out. I think it was today. Uh, earlier, uh, we already have a version from that um, available for uh, for the Avado. And on top of that, there's also an SDK where you can create your own packages. Um, just as a side note, it is all based on a Docker system. Um, so if you're a little uh, proficient with uh, creating Docker files and so forth, you will not find it uh, all too difficult to create your own packages. Uh, and then, yeah, the smart mining, which is sort of an extension to that decentralized cloud, uh, really allows you to earn crypto by sharing these components. Um, so if you go to the website, uh, you can check it out later or now if you want. So you have um, different models that we provide and also, also a different price point, obviously. Um, the big difference is the, yeah, the amount of memory that's in the box and the storage uh, options. So the larger the disk, of course, as you know, SSD storage is quite expensive. Um, so merely the price difference is there. Um, we have also investigated all these pieces of hardware. So we, we, we found out what kind of and what combinations of uh, software that fits best on on either of these uh, hardware configurations. So the, depending on your budget, you can either go for uh, from a very small uh, box to uh, to the largest that we have. The largest that we have currently has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte uh, SSD storage, just to give you an idea. Uh, we ship it uh, worldwide, and people can use in our uh, campaign our store using Dai uh, stablecoin or with credit cards. And of course, right now we have the collaboration going on in the send notes. Um, uh, projects where we are offering one i5, which is the largest model of Avalu, which you can win if you participate, or you can also win discount codes uh, for purchasing a box. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what you can actually do with the box. Uh, so there's a number of things. You can run your own nodes. You can participate in the smart mining and in that Rio cloud. Uh, we also uh, will talk later about the uh, Polkadot chain out of the box with the solution that we've created. And I'll also mention the concept of staking and how our approach to that is. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about running your own blockchain nodes. Um, so why in the, uh, in, the, in the first place do you want to do that? Um, so as we know, the internet and also blockchain was designed to be decentralized. Uh, but if you look into reports, uh, it appears that almost 90% of all dApps directly or indirectly use nodes that are hosted on centralized servers. So that means that in the end, all uh, or at least 90% of that traffic ends up going to uh, AWS or DigitalOcean. For example, if you use uh, MetaMask, they also provide their servers to interact with. Uh, Infura is a, a similar example. So 
despite the idea that it should be decentralized, um, a lot of it is centralized. And that's one of the reasons to run your own node because running your own nodes allows you through the VPN, for example, to connect uh, your, your MetaMask, for example, to your own node if you want. Uh, so you have your uh, your own infrastructure, which is actually decentralized. So this is more like a conceptual reason um, and a philosophical reason why you want to do that. Uh, second, also another uh, reason why you want to run your own blockchain is that there's sort of two parties in that whole ecosystem, uh, which are the miners or the validators, um, which create new which create new blocks and provide security to the network. But uh, nodes in themselves, so non-miner, non-validating nodes. They also perform an important task in a blockchain network, which is the verification of transactions. They also provide and empower the peer-to-peer -peer network, and they also keep a copy of the confirmed transactions, so the ledger. And there's where uh, Avado steps in. So that can also be a reason why you want to participate in uh, running your own blockchain node. So just to be clear, uh, Avado is not meant as a mining solution. It is really uh, for running nodes, so non-mining nodes. We also want to debunk the myth that running a node is difficult because you see that all over the place, people trying to bash you know, certain projects that say, yeah, it's so difficult and then you need specialized hardware and the size is huge and so forth. Um, and by providing Avado and also providing all these different uh, blockchains that you can run, we sort of debunk that whole idea that is that is difficult. So you can really just purchase, purchase it. Um, install it, you just plug it into your router, turn on uh, the power supply, and you're uh, and it's done, so you're running a node already. So I think that's uh, for now enough talking before you all fall asleep. Uh, let's try to have a look at the product itself. Um, so I'm connected here uh, through a VPN connection uh, to an Avado i5, which is uh, sitting on, the, on my shelf next to my router here uh, downstairs. And true, so when I'm connected to it, I can just go to my.avado and then the, uh, the UI of the box pops up. So I'm just quickly going to run through some of the components just to give you a feel. Uh, so by default, you come on the, onto the home screen where you see some metrics on the health, so the CPU usage, the memory, and the disk usage. Uh, the, some of the changes that I'm syncing are also here uh, displayed. So if you're still syncing up, then uh, it will show a progress bar. Uh, the two changes that I'm running here, um, which have this, this uh, metering on it, uh, are there. And then here's a list of all the packages that I'm currently running on this box. And so this is obviously also like in uh, one of the experimentation boxes that we use here to see how far we can stretch it. But just to give you an idea, uh, so this particular box is currently running six blockchains uh, at the moment. So we have a Gurley Get, we have a Coven testnet, we have Kozama running on it. Uh, we have a Bitcoin uh, live net is running on it. Uh, an Ethereum chain is running on it. And then we also have the, have the Ethereum 2.0 beacon chain running on it. So these are all the, the blockchains running on it. At the same time, this box is running 10 validators on the on the E2.0 testnet. Uh, at the same time, um, I'm running here a, a Boink client, which is helping uh, protein folding for, uh, for COVID-19. Um, and to top it off, I'm running these two applications, like uh, the Tornado Cache and the Mysterium Node, which are uh, economically incentivized applications. So that means that they, both of them, give me a return. So they give me money for running uh, their software. So just to give you an idea, what's, um, so that you can really run quite a lot of uh, things simultaneously on this kind of hardware. Uh, second part I want to talk about is the DAP store. Um, so this thing is uh, showing like in a categorized way all the different DAPs that you can install um, on the Avado box. Um, so that's what we have here. So uh, just to know, uh, just for your interest, it's um, all these packages that you can additionally install. They are hosted on IPFS, where so they are not hosted on, on Avado servers or anything. When you create your new package, um, then it will result into an IPFS hash. And so you can even type uh, IPFS hashes directly here into the search box if you create your own packages. That's an easy way to add them. 
but all the others, so the, the, the ones that we have created, for example, here, like the Edgeware node, is, um, is also hosted on IPFS, so you don't need to uh, fear that uh, if Avalo would disappear, that you, would, uh, you wouldn't have your, uh, your packages anymore. So um, let me show you or try to show you how easy it is. So here, for example, so I'm already running the, um, the Kusama client here, so I'm not going to install it, of course, because it's already installed. But we can try it out with the Substrate Edgeware. Uh, we also have a package for that. So I, I simply click the Install button. Then it will give me an overview of, of what it is. So you can have an idea, because maybe some of these packages, you don't know the, the project or, uh, or what it is. And then you simply click the install button and then you will start downloading the package from IPFS. And once that's done, um, he will then start the package. And that's basically the only thing uh, you have to do. So now he's done downloading. He's now loading the image into the box. And of course, this box is already running quite some uh, quite a significant amount of packages already. So um, this might take a little longer than, uh, than usual. Okay, so that's it. So now I've installed a uh, substrate node. Um, I can now go to manage package. And this gives me uh, an overview of all the settings of the package. So you don't need, really need to worry about it. Um, but the interesting part is here. So here's a log file. So there's a, a console log of that thing. So you, as you see, it's now starting uh, to synchronize the network. And uh, we can just now leave it running. So that's sort of the, uh, the way that we try to make it easy for anyone to participate. And so if I go uh, back to my dApps now, which gives me a list. So this is like the third screen I want to show you. Uh, these are all the packages that are running. Um, and so here you can, uh, you can manage them. So we can uh, like put them on pause, for example. And so if you, we can pause them, we can restart them. I can remove them all together. Uh, remove the volumes if I want to start uh, over again. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to show here. Um, then next we have uh, the possibility to create VPN uh, credentials. So using this screen, it's possible to create uh, through OpenVPN new credentials to log into the box. Um, so and then if you install a VPN client and you install that, um, that old VPN file that, this, uh, that the box produces, then all of a sudden you have uh, remote access to it. So that's the usual way of setting it up. So if you install it, if you uh, so if you buy it, you unwrap it, uh, you, uh, you put it into the to your router. It will expose a, a Wi-Fi access point. You go to that Wi-Fi. There you see this screen. You create a VPN account. You install the VPN. Install the VPN account of it. Uh, and then you shut down the Wi-Fi and reconnect back to your usual Wi-Fi. And then go uh, from that point. You go further with uh, your VPN connection. And if you're out of the house, you can uh, you can also connect your box through that VPN connection. So I think this sort of uh, wraps up what I wanted to show initially from um, from the UI. So I hope you guys now have a, a better understanding how it works. Let me talk now about uh, smart mining. So it's a second part in my talk. So the idea um, is that some of the dApps that we provide in our store, uh, they will give you a return. So two of the examples I already talked about are Mysterium and Tornado Cash. Uh, so Mysterium is a package where you can share your bandwidth and by providing an, a VPN endpoint for other people. And this project pays you out in crypto. Uh, so if you install it and you run it, uh, then you need to just to provide a wallet address. And as long as you provide this service, like at uh, the end of each month, um, they will pay you out in each and like the, the terms and conditions and how much they pay out. It depends on which country you, you are in and sort of what ranking that you have. Um, but so, so without it, without doing anything, uh, additionally, because you're, you're already powering that box anyway, your internet connection is already paid for. Uh, so this is just like revenue that you get back from, uh, from running these additional packages. They also don't take a lot of, uh, of space or uh, CPU on the box itself. Uh, same for Tornado Cache, uh, which is a sort of a relayer 
that relays transactions for other people. And also, when each time you do a relay transaction for someone, you will earn a fee, also paid out uh, in tokens. So that's uh, the way that works. Then on top of those sort of off-the-shelf uh, partnerships that we have created with other uh, projects, we are also in the um, like in the evolution of creating our own solution, uh, which is the Rio Cloud. And Rio is an abbreviation of Run Your Own. So Run Your Own Cloud. It's our solution to enable decentralized infrastructure. Uh, so let me try to explain how this works. So the uh, Rio Clouds. So first of all, you have a number of Avado boxes in the wild. They're all connected to the internet, but they all run individually. And each of these nodes, uh, by using the Dapp Store, have installed one or more packages. Um, so for example, let's assume that one of these nodes is running an IPFS node and is running a Kusama node, for example. Then we have created uh, a separate package, which is the Rio client package. And if you install it, so it's opt-in, so it's not, uh, you don't have to do it, but if you want to do it, you can. If you run that uh, client package, then it will show you in some sort of an onboarding wizard, which I will also show you later, um, the services that you have running on your box and the services that we uh, support through our Rio cloud uh, will be shown with just like simple flip switches. So you can say, okay, uh, the system, so the Rio client will de detect that you're running an IPVS node. So we'll ask you, oh, do you want to share your IPVS node? So your IPVS node gateway, for example. If you do that, uh, then your Avado will join a virtual LAN over the internet. Um, and so it will receive an additional internal IP address. So it really creates like a, a virtual uh, network. So the, the network is when we initiate it, but your box will join it. Um, the interesting part of it is that for the outside world, your actual IP will not be exposed because it's a, again a peer-to-peer. Uh, application. It's also end-to-end -end encrypted, all the traffic. Um, so and that's uh, pretty important that your own sort of IP address is not exposed to um, anybody using the Rio cloud later on. Uh, what we are providing currently is um, a load balancer um, and a monitoring system and a system that provides endpoints to these shared services. So we are currently running one um, of these load balancers. Uh, but we have uh, in our, on our roadmap um, a plan to run multiple of these uh, of these endpoints. And then, so by flipping those switches in your uh, Rio client package, you can, as an Avado user, join several of these pools. So we have, for example, a Kusama node pool that we are running. Uh, we have an IPVS node pool. We also have for that tornado cash relayer that I mentioned earlier, we also have a pool for that. So it's easy for other people to just tap into that service uh, through the Rio cloud. Um, so, and then you can uh, join any of these, uh, any of these uh, pools. So the tasks for the Avado endpoint is first of all, create an availability pool uh, so that it's, it's usable for other people. Um, its second task is to spread the load. This is its load balancer. So there's like uh, eight or 10 Avado boxes providing IPFS uh, endpoint services. Uh, it will spread the load evenly over those. And thirdly, it will keep track of the uptime of each individual Avado box within that specific pool. Um, so, and the, the overview page, like the monitoring page of that is a, a public page, we can, which you can visit at status.cloud.avado.do. Um, this is the way it looks. So for each of these pools, if you go to that website, you will see how many nodes. So currently we have uh, like three backend nodes running, uh, empowering this uh, pool. But so if you have an Avado, you can simply install Kusama. Uh, as a node and then install the real client, flip the switch and you will become part of this uh, node pool. And then you will see here that, and that's sort of the task of that uh, load balancer is that it exposes here uh, a web socket which you can connect to. And so if you want to interact with Kusama, you can simply go uh, to this endpoint and then the lo our load balancer will spread it over those decentralized uh, boxes that are 
like somewhere in the world so we don't even know uh, where they need where they are um, and but it's um, so it's a pretty anonymous solution what are the benefits uh, of that uh, Rio solution so there's one benefit for the end user uh, so if you actually want to use any of these endpoints uh, we can provide very high uptimes on uh, on those systems because a lot of since there's uh, usually a bunch of Avado boxes empowering such a pool uh, so that means that as long as our load balancer of course is up and running uh, we can get very high uh, uptime so it's very valuable for people using it uh, for the Avado users themselves uh, it's interesting because they can receive rewards based on uptime in that pool and those payments can be either done through a smart contract, as I depicted it here, um, or they can be sort of like wallets that get funded by people or projects that uh, want to expose or use these endpoints. Uh, and they sort of sponsor uh, those pools. So it doesn't necessarily have to run through a smart contract. But uh, the thing is that our load balancer can um, measure what the uptime is and spread those rewards evenly amongst um, depending on the participation that each of the user has now what is the status of this so the load balancer and everything so the whole rio cloud as a concept is uh, up and running for i think uh, two months and a half now uh, we're planning on launching the actual rewards uh, in this quarter of this year so a lot of these uh, the underlying system has already been built uh, we are currently testing it and so it will be rolled out um, in the coming weeks so let's have a small look at that as well uh, so first of all if i go back to my avado box uh, so you have here so we go to the home screen uh, so here you have an installed version of the avado uh, rio client so if i open it uh, and this is also something interesting that uh, for certain packages if they require it we have a um, we have created a separate wizard so a separate ui for that specific package so that, that means that each package that we release can have its own user interface which sort of extends the basic ui so in this case of the right rio cloud uh, that's what we did uh, so it shows some network statistics and also shows what services i'm currently sharing in the network uh, so you see i'm sharing quite a lot here and if i go to the edit settings there you can see this this uh this, this switches here so i can just enable or disable any of these uh, supported packages so i can also give my name a note which is optional um and that will show on the on the on the status screen and later on and this is a possible wallet address you can put in uh, to send these rewards to like i said this is not active yet uh, but it will be very soon uh, second part is that uh, status page the page has gone to idle mode so let's reload it so which is that status uh, page so you can uh, visit that as well they can have an overview of all these things that uh, that we are running so we have the tornado cash relay pool which currently have has nine uh, active backend nodes uh, we have an ethereum rpc pool an ipvs node pool with 13 backend nodes um uh, coven pooled nodes um kuzama pool a uh, node pool uh, which has uh, three nodes and that's it uh, for the time being uh, so and i uh, feel free to try it out so if any of those uh things so for example ipfs we have um like a test here so if you click on the test it will try to fetch uh, a random ipfs hash here in this case a hello world from that specific endpoint that we provide so you could you also use this endpoint to basically serve any kind of uh, IPFS content or access it um, through the Rio cloud. All right, so I think that's it for the Avado cloud. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to paste them uh, in the chat. We'll look at that later. Another thing that we have built um, is a solution for Polkadot uh, to create your own private networks. I'm not going to demo this. I'm just going to show it uh, in the slides. So we have two uh, packages, uh, which is called the Polkadot Custom Chain and the Polkadot Explorer, uh, which you can install. 
Um, so on the first system, so the sort of the setup that we want to create is that you have, for example, three of these Avado boxes, and you can say, okay, I want to run uh, a Polkadot network on these three boxes, like a, a private network. Then you can use this package to, uh, to achieve that. So you start out with one uh, network host where you install uh, that Polka dot uh, package. And then it comes with a wizard where you can configure and create your own custom chain. So this is just uh, basically to do the, the setup of the, uh, of the basic node. So the network host here, uh, so if you add it, it will again create uh, a virtual LAN over the internet where these different boxes that you want to add to, um, to your own Polka dot uh, custom chain will reside in, so they will all receive an internal IP address for that specific network. And then on all the other uh, boxes that you want to add, you can uh, click and join an existing network, and then you have to type in the network ID that, uh, that the host created, um, like this. And on the host side, you have to add members, so this, this is a way of sort of adding new nodes to this network. Um, so you go on with that. And okay, let me see. Yeah, so if you add it, uh, so this is the example of adding one client. If you uh, add it, uh, if you're done doing that, you can actually start uh, your Polkadot node. And then what he will create for you are all the parameters that you need to provide to your, um, to your executable so that it can connect to the host of the network. So it, it will. Um, figure out his uh, network address as a boot node and provide it as an option. So it's all integrated, so you don't have to touch all those uh, things. You just click on the button here, start Polkadot node. And then you will uh, start using that network using the host as a boot node. So that's sort of the way uh, you can do that. And then we also have in the other package, uh, the Polkadot Explorer, um, and maybe the screenshot <laughs> doesn't really, uh, uh, you get all its glory, uh, but you can then explore your own network uh, using the package that we have provided there. So that's also uh, something easy to set up. Um, then lastly, I want to talk about uh, staking. So we currently have uh, one, yeah, I'm not gonna show the, the move here, it's a little silly maybe. Um, but so we have an onboarding system where you can uh, you can actually uh, join like a staking network here in this case it's e 2.0 uh, staking uh, but it's in a like in a separate package that it resides um, so we also want to add that so we also are looking into creating validator packages uh, also for Kusama we're also looking into creating um, a solution where you can host um, the sentry nodes uh, that are required. So we are planning on adding those into uh, into one of these Avado uh, load balanced pools as well. Um, so yeah, that's what we are trying to do with these um, yeah. So with these uh, these pieces of software as well. Um, this is the way to contact us. Uh, we are uh, obviously on Twitter, and uh, it, was, it was very nice to see all these uh, different memes coming in uh, with the sent notes uh, hashtag. So keep them coming. Um, and of course, you can visit us uh, on our website. So I think I'm pretty much done with uh, what I wanted to talk about. So I don't know if there are any questions um, that you guys might have. I think we're just uh, over halfway the hour. Um, so if you have uh, if you have any questions there, feel free to type them into the to the chat. Yeah, we can also paste a link to this Telegram group in the chat if you'd like. Oh yeah, sure. That's uh, because that's also one of the uh, one of the things in the in the contests is um, yeah, there are like a few of these simple things like uh, like joining our Telegram group, for example. So it's certainly something you can do. So then I don't know. Do you have the link there? Of the or should I give you one? It's on our, it's on our website as well. Maybe I can look it up here.
Uh, then I also don't know if there there's anything uh, specific that needs to be said about the contest that is currently running uh, around the the uh, the Avado. The like people attending the, the the webcast here can can still do now to uh, to sign up to it or to participate in it. Yes, um, let me check. Let me confirm right now. Actually, the the end date because I know that's coming up pretty quickly. Okay, so yeah, so if, I, I assume a lot of the people in the call are already part of the Send Nodes competition, but the the competition yeah. will run through um, midnight on midnight UTC time on May sixth. So there's about um, five days left in that. Uh, you can either find that on Twitter by searching hashtag Send Nodes, um, and the the whole competition is really for people to to spin up uh, validator nodes or or just uh, a full node. Um, and part of the prize pool is to, to win either a discount or a, um, an Avado device. So um, for mm -hmm. those who are interested, check that out. We've had a lot of fun with it over the last uh, three or four weeks. So um, yeah, and besides that, it looks like somebody posted the link to your Telegram here. So yeah, I see that um, it's already there. Yeah. You see a question there on how the winner is determined. Uh, I don't know, Dan, if you can say something about that. I assume it's uh, the ranking that uh, that is followed somehow. Yeah, so the, the competition is being run through a tool called Viper. And Viper has like a point structure to it. And there's a leaderboard. Um, but essentially, it's a random draw. But your, your, your position in the leaderboard determines how many like lottery tickets you get, if you want to think about it that way. So if you're if you have 20,000 points and I have 1,000 points, you'll have 20 times the amount of chance um, to win the competition as I would. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a random draw. So we'll probably, um, our plan is to record that, uh, record kind of like a live screen share of us doing the random draw so that people can see how it was done. Um, and then the winners will be um, announced probably everywhere. So on Reddit and on Twitter, um, anyone who is in the competition should get notified of that um, just after the end of the competition. Does that answer yep. your question, Bernd? Cool. Yeah, and I hope, of course, that uh, once the, the Avado is, uh, is handed out, that we will see some uh, follow-up tweets with, uh, with someone actually running a Kusama node or even a validator on it. Um, so, so as I was uh, also saying earlier, so we are working on these uh, on these packages, like uh, like a validator client, also uh, the Sentry nodes. So really, one of the upcoming days, we'll probably have uh, more news about that. Uh, so they can uh, so they will be added to the Dapp Store as well. Um, so people can actually also start using that. Um, they're uh, part of the uh, the Avado family, let's say. Perfect. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe in the chat also, maybe one of the open questions would be uh, if there are any like specific packages that that you would like to uh, to add there, because right now we have like a pretty generic implementation of, of creating a, like a Polkadot network uh, in this case. Um, but maybe there are like in this ecosystem, um, maybe there are other Packages or opportunities that we are currently missing um, of running it on, on Avado. So it'd be interesting also for us to uh, to get some some insights or uh, or suggestions uh, from the audience to say what uh, what they would feel interesting to to add to the box. Because of course, the more packages we can add and the more functionality we can add, uh, also the more value the box brings to to people who are in this uh, specific ecosystem. Um, so I mean, you can. We're always open to that. So if you uh, if you have a specific question or you have a specific functionality that you're missing, um, don't hesitate to come to our Telegram group and just ask it because we're constantly on the outlook of uh, to see what we can add. Um, 
yeah so feel free to to add that so one of the things we're also looking into for example is the uh because right now you're running a full node if you install a kusama node right now it's a full node uh, there's also the option to run an archive node which is uh, a bit larger to run um, but that's for example one of the things where uh, we have already on our planning um to uh to do that so actually with some fiddling on the command line parameters, you could also run uh, an archive node right now, but we probably will uh, release a separate package for that because I assume people will either run like the the archive node or uh, or uh, just a full node, but not both at the same time on the box. So I think it would make sense to have like two separate packages for that, for example. Mm -hmm. Yep, and when we wrap up the send nodes competition, we can also include that in the follow up. We can give a link for people to come to you guys if they have any ideas or feedback on that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we'd uh, we'd love to hear uh, about those things for sure. Any other questions from from those of you on the line? Cool. Well, anything else, Stefan, or should we wrap it up? Yeah, maybe we can wrap it up. I think uh, my my goal for the call was to uh, to actually show the UI to people because, of course, it's uh, difficult to get an idea about what Avado uh, what Avado is really about without actually buying one. So I hope this uh, this opportunity also uh, gave people the chance to see what's actually behind the curtain, so to speak. Um, and yeah, like I say, also want to emphasize again that we are open to uh, to collaborations with uh, with projects. And like, if there's any functionality that you're missing on Avado, which you think uh, would be useful for your specific use case, uh, feel free to ask it. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, thanks for coming on, Stefan. Thanks for the the partnership on this um, little campaign here. And <laughs> No, it was really exciting uh, so far, and it's not over yet. So uh, keep the tweets coming. We've really had a good laughs already with all the all the stuff coming in. It's really, really amazing. So exactly. I hope to see uh, a lot more of that. And thanks for having me, of course. Thanks everybody for joining. Thanks, Stefan. Okay. Bye bye. bye.